I literally have tea with honey in it because I know I'm gonna be talking a lot in this video. I have a lot to say. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby and welcome. Hi, it's nice to meet you. It's, it's really good to have you here and I hope I hope that you stick around, especially if you like true crime content because that's literally all I do here on my channel. I know, that's like pretty much it. I've been waiting a long time for specifically you to click on this video and come to my channel and especially click that subscribe button down below and maybe turn on the post notifications to be notified every time that I love upload. I just said love load, upload. I'm a professional. You probably read the title of this video and you're like, Excuse me? Is that a made-up title? Is that clickbait? It's not. It's not. It actually happened and when you hear this story, your mind is going to be blown. But before we get into the case, I gotta say that today's video is sponsored and it's sponsored by one of my favorite repeating sponsors here on my channel and that is Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a video streaming service that is dedicated to bringing its viewers the highest quality documentaries. If you are interested in expanding your knowledge about topics you're passionate about, Magellan TV is for you. Right now, Magellan TV has over 2,000 documentaries acquired by some of the best filmmakers and documentary networks from all around the world. They also add new programs every single week so you'll never run out of things to watch. Magellan TV can be watched anytime and anywhere and is compatible with Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, Google Play, iOS, and there are no ads so you can enjoy your programs with no interruptions. Their crime and mystery section is absolutely incredible, including documentaries and docuseries about tons of cases from all around the world that even I had never heard of before. And you know that every time I talk about Magellan TV, I have a little bit of a recommendation for you guys on the service. This time, I gotta say, my recommendation is called The Chair. The Chair is a documentary about the history of the electric chair, including how it was made and the first execution. It follows the rivalry between two electric pioneers, Edison and Westinghouse, and discusses the controversy behind the electric chair and the death penalty in general. The Chair was good. I highly recommend it. But if you want to check out Magellan TV yourself, you can go to try.magellantv.com slash gabulosis and you can get one month free to check out the service and see if you want to sign up yourself, see if it's worth it. I promise it is. You guys have been loving Magellan TV. So with all that being said, thank you Magellan TV for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the video. This is the case of a woman who was murdered by the same man who murdered not only her mother, but her cousin more than two decades earlier. The historic Snowden House, a three-story, 6,000 square foot luxurious mansion built in 1919 with elegant architectural details, antique crystal chandeliers, grand marble flooring, and heirlooms from the original family. It is simply breathtaking. It now serves as a bed and breakfast and wedding venue. The property also serves as the location for the 1994 movie, The Client, a film adaptation of the John Grisham murder case. A gem of Horseshoe Lake, an already tourist-driven area with many upscale vacation homes and some of the most raved about restaurants. It's an area located only about 35 miles southwest of Memphis, Tennessee. It sounds like a dream, but it would be a complete nightmare on more than one occasion. In the year 1996, the Snowden House was not what it is in today's time. It wasn't this extravagant home where wedding venues are held and a lot of people visit to just see how gorgeous it is. It was kind of more on the rundown side in 1996, and it was owned by a woman named 
Sally Snowden. Now Sally owned the Snowden house, but she wasn't at this time living in the Snowden house. She was actually living a few houses down from the mansion. Sally was 75 years old at the time and she wasn't living there alone. Her nephew, Joseph Lee Baker, was also living there. He was a 52 year old musician. He was a blues and rock guitarist, mostly a guitarist. I'm not sure if he played other instruments or sang, but he was very, very popular in the Memphis area. On September 10th of 1996, Sally and Joseph were both shot to death. The man responsible, technically boy, was a 16 year old named Travis Lewis. Travis Lewis's parents worked at the Snowden house. When it comes to a motive for the murders of Sally and John, Travis said that he had shot them because they startled him while he was trying to rob the home. After shooting them both, he set fire to the home and fled. So it looks like for this case, the motive was robbery. But of course, we can never be 100% sure if that is the reason he went to the home or if he simply wanted to take their lives. He was only 16 at the time he did this, but because of how heinous the crime was, he was tried as an adult. He pleaded guilty on April 7th, 1998, but insisted he was not responsible for the murders and that it was another man who committed the crime. He was given 28 and a half years in prison. Now, while Travis was behind bars, a woman reached out to him, and this woman's name was Martha McKay. Martha McKay was Sally's daughter. Martha McKay had taken over the Snowden house in the year 2004. She belonged to the very influential Snowden family, a family who had deep roots in the area. Almost everyone living in that area of Horseshoe Lake knew of the family for generations. In an interview with Memphis Magazine in the year 2015, she said that during the summers, her mother would drop her and her siblings off at the gorgeous home that her grandparents owned, and says she felt like royalty, that everything was fresh from the garden, eggs and all, and even a peach orchard, that they swam almost every day in the lake, that it was just ideal. Sheriff Allen of the local sheriff's department said he had met Martha before and he said that she was a very nice lady and she was very interesting to talk to and he said that he had a lot of respect for her because she had restored the Snowden house to its original glory. Martha had developed a love for restoring old homes. She took over and made significant improvements. She brought it up to date with modern amenities while also keeping the historic aspects of the home. She did a lot of researching and installed a geothermal system that would use the temperature of the lake to heat and cool the home year round. The only electricity was for the pumps and units. By doing this, she was able to cut back utility expenses by 75% and use that money for more restorations on the home. The home had been finally brought back to life after so many years. Martha was big hearted. Now Martha's sister Katie said that everyone who met Martha was just captivated by her. Everybody just loved her and there was something about Martha that left an impression on people. I read a lot of firsthand accounts from people who knew Martha and I could not find one bad thing said about Martha. She was just an overall lovely individual. Martha was a very, very intelligent woman, but at the same time, it was like she could almost be gullible when it came to people. She just wanted to see the best in everyone. She wanted to find the good in people. And unfortunately, there's just some people that don't have a lot of good in them. Martha had moved back to the Horseshoe Lake area from San Francisco, California, right after her mother and cousin's murder. After Sally and Joseph's murder, everybody in the family was of course completely devastated. But at the same time, Martha wanted answers. She was still grieving, but she wanted to know why. That was really the main reason Martha had reached out to Travis Lewis. She just wanted to know the thought process that went behind him taking her mother and cousin's life. Now, during their conversations and writing back and forth, 
he was very manipulative and she like I said wanted to see the best in people and that was kind of the downfall of it all. According to Sheriff Allen it was pretty much Martha's mission to talk to Travis Lewis, get as much information out of him as possible and see if possibly someone else was involved, that maybe it wasn't him who took their lives. Martha felt like it was her spiritual duty to kind of lead this man down a good path in life. As time went on and they talked more, Martha felt horrible that he was put behind bars so young and she truly felt like he was telling the truth and that it was another man responsible for her loved one's murders. She believed wholeheartedly he was innocent. Her family said she was a very forgiving individual, but they were still extremely shocked she befriended a man convicted for her mother and cousin's murder, no matter how many years had gone by. A friend of the family's named Frank Bird had actually driven Martha to the penitentiary where Travis Lewis was being held. And the whole ride there, he was asking her, like, why are you going to see this man? What is the point of seeing this man? This is somebody who has been convicted of your own mother and cousin's murder. What is the point in seeing him? And Frank said that Martha didn't really say anything. Frank just wanted to know what the point was in communicating with this convicted felon. What was the reasoning behind it? What are you going to get out of it? And Martha just wasn't responding. She did not know what to say. It was kind of like Martha overall was a little bit tired of family and friends asking her why she was communicating with this man when she was on her own mission of trying to figure out everything she could about her mother and cousin's murder. Friends and family members of Martha told her on so many different occasions to just please be careful. Please, no matter what you do, just kind of be on the lookout for anything that's going on, anything that's a little bit funny. You can't trust this man 100%. Just look out for yourself. In the year 2018, Travis Lewis was actually paroled and he was supposed to serve 28 and a half years behind bars. He only ended up serving 23 years of that sentence. After he was let out, he was still in contact with Martha and Martha's family was contacted about Travis Lewis being paroled and none of them agreed with this decision. They thought that he deserved to be behind bars for the entire 28 and a half years or most of them thought longer, but Martha did not agree with this. She thought that he deserved to be let out because like I said before, she thought that he was innocent. So here's where things start going downhill yet again. After Travis was let out, he was secretly hired by Martha at the Snowden house. I don't think a lot of family and friends of Martha knew that she had hired Travis Lewis at the Snowden house because every article that I read about it said that she secretly hired him, secretly. So I think this was kept on the down low because if family and friends knew that she had hired this man, I'm sure they would be extremely worried and completely disagree with her decision, rightfully so. Their fears though came to a reality. During the morning of March 25th, 2020, only a few months ago, authorities responded to an alarm at the Snowden house. When they got there, the back door of the home was open and they went inside. The lifeless body of 63-year-old Martha McKay was found at the top of the stairs. She had been stabbed and bludgeoned to death near a bag of her personal belongings and a utility knife. Police could hear someone else in the home still. The killer was inside. The two deputies at the scene witnessed the person responsible jump from an upstairs window, get into a vehicle. The vehicle got stuck in the yard and the suspect fled the vehicle. The man then jumped into the lake, went under and did not come back up. The suspect drowned. Later on, they called in fish and wildlife officials in the area and using sonar equipment, they were able to find his body. When they fished the body out of the lake and they identified the man, they 
were in disbelief over who it was. It was 39-year-old Travis Lewis. Martha had sold a chandelier, and she sold the chandelier for $10,000. After she got the money for the chandelier, she hid that $10,000 somewhere in the Snowden house. Now, that money went missing, and one of the main people, workers, individuals, who was there the day that it went missing in the Snowden house was Travis Lewis. So Martha put two and two together and she realized that it was Travis who took the money and she fired him on the spot and told him that he was forbidden to come back to the property. So obviously this made Travis very, very, very angry. Angry enough to seek revenge. The fact that Martha's body was laying next to some of her belongings, but also a utility knife, does show that she probably tried to fight for her life. And there's a cat hair in my drink. The thing is though, is that we will never know exactly what happened that night because Martha's not alive, of course, she's the victim, and Travis Lewis, he didn't know how to swim and he jumped into the lake and drowned, so we can't ask him. We can't get any truth out of him ever. Obviously, Martha's family was just in complete shock that Martha's life was taken by the same person who had taken Sally and Joseph's life 25 years earlier. If Martha never befriended Travis Lewis, would he have ever come back and taken her life? That is something we'll never know. Ultimately, a woman's kindness put her in harm's way. Here's the part where I really need this tea because I have, I have a little bit to say about this. I have never in my entire life researched a case where I've seen so much victim blaming. Now me, Gabby, me, me personally, would I hire anybody in any way that I thought could have possibly even just 1% been responsible for the murders of two people I loved dearly. No, I would not hire someone like that. But you have to remember that you are not everybody else. You do not have the same view as every other person on earth. I have seen hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of comments completely destroying this woman online. I have seen people online call this woman every name in the book because she hired somebody that was convicted of taking her mother and cousin's life. I understand that. I get that. But people are not understanding that she thought he was innocent. My point is that Martha is a victim in this case. No matter what you think she should have done, she is a victim. Going around online and dragging her name through the mud because you don't agree with her choices is not the answer when there is still family of hers online to see those things. Just be respectful. That's all I'm saying. In today's time, even after the tragic murder, the Snowden House is still one of the most popular wedding venues in the area, but there's a sense of sadness in the air. So that is the case of Sally Snowden, Joseph Lee Baker, and Martha McKay. It's a very wild case. You're going to have mixed feelings. You're not really gonna know exactly what to think. It's just one of those cases, but nonetheless, Keep it respectful and let me know your opinions down below in the comments. And before I end this video, thank you Magellan again for sponsoring today's video and I will see you all in the next one.